Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. The sixth chapter of Acts cites the cause why Stephen was hailed before the Jewish tribunal that had conspired together to crucify Jesus. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. This, in the minds of his judges, warranted the man's execution by the cruel expedient of stoning. But as is only fair for those who are condemned, Stephen was given large latitude in speaking in his own defense, and he used it well, as the seventh chapter of Acts demonstrates. Beginning with Abraham, being called to a life of separation from the idolatrous practices of the world about him, continuing through the journey of Joseph and his brothers into Egypt, Moses' miraculous childhood, and wilderness odyssey with the Israelite people in tow, Stephen spoke of the establishment of the Israelite nation. The primary theme of his defense seems to have been how often and thoroughly the forefathers of those who judged him had forsaken the Lord, no matter how great and compassionate was his mercy to them all. The crescendo of speaking swells to a climax, with this man of God showing his accusers they are once again walking in the footsteps of those who before them had so often and so deeply failed of their divine commission to keep covenant with God and thus be his peculiar people. Their ancestors had all too often sunk into rejection of God's most impassioned pleas for their devotion. Now he has sent his only begotten son, and those sitting before Stephen have sinned more greatly than all who came before them, for they have cruelly and maliciously misinterpreted what Christ was bringing them and rewarded his love and mercies of compassion with a crown of thorns and a Roman cross. Stephen describes God's mercy, rather, perhaps as well as a man can in the space of time available. The ancient Jews rebelled against Moses and God, yet he was persistent in his efforts to win their affection. He provided them a place to worship him while in the wilderness, a tabernacle, and even lived among them. He led them with a pillar of fire by day and by night and a cloud during the day. He parted waters. He sent manna from heaven, provided quail, gave water from the stony boulder's face, and sent Joshua to lead them against whatever foes awaited in the Canaan land. There had been Samuel and David, wise Solomon, fiery Elijah, patient Elisha with powers to raise the dead. There had been prophets and angel visits. Throughout the long history of the nation, God's grace had risen higher than Israel's sins. Finally, he had sent his son with a direct personal message and complete power and authority to forgive sins and grant entrance into heaven. And even this final crowning mercy could not have been rejected more thoroughly. Stephen's words are the message of a man who values truth and the hope of helping others more than his own life. He knew of Jesus' terrible suffering. He knew these cruel Jews were the same ones who had consigned him to that fate. And he was charged with, before these judges, capital crimes, which he had already demonstrated they considered worthy of death. In the face of these facts, this noble man of God did not try to hide what he believed. The wellspring of love, of truth, and devotion to God in his own innermost personhood were too precious for him to sacrifice by trying to crawl or toady up to these pretenders of being God's representatives. He boldly and courageously sharpened the focus of the things they all knew and believed about their common past to a point directly condemning them with the same spirit and behavior as their ancestors. How could they not have known this would lead to a bitter rejection from a just God? The love of truth more than self-preservation has been the characteristic of the Christian church through the centuries. Rather, It is her message to the world that we've all sinned, we all need a Savior. He has died for us all, that we can be made pure and innocent within. Have you talked to him today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at G-O-D-S-F-I-V-E minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.
God's Word speaks truth. God's Word speaks life. And God's Word speaks to us today. Hi, I'm Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. Each week we explore God's Word together on In the Shadow of Your Wings, a radio broadcast on KNEO. Tune in each Saturday at 6.45 p.m. to hear the show. And if you ever miss it, you can always view the archive online at kneo.org. We also have the program available as a podcast as well, so you can listen anytime, anywhere. It's available from Sky High Podcast Network. I invite you to check out the show and learn more about our incredible God and how He cares for you. You can trust Him. You can depend on Him, and you can rest in the shadow of His wings. 